Hi everyone, thanks for visiting my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so glad that you stopped by and I hope that you will consider subscribing. So today I have another canning video for you. Many of you have been asking for meals in a jar. Um, so I've been on a quest to can up some things that I have not canned for you. And on the Healthy Canning website, if you're not familiar with them, I highly encourage you to take a look. It's healthycanning.com. They are a trusted source. Uh, for great recipes and great canning advice, so check them out. Uh, this recipe comes from their website. Just as an FYI, they link or share the source of all the recipes that they share. So they only share tested and safe recipes. So we are gonna be making Hungarian goulash. Now, in light of full disclosure, this is something I've never made, um, but I had a beautiful pork roast that I bought at the grocery store a few days ago that I needed to do something with and I had planned on canning it but I wasn't exactly sure how I wanted to do it. But you can also use um, beef. So you could use a beef roast as well. Beef is probably more traditional than pork but I did find some regular Hungarian goulash recipes that did use pork instead of beef. So they're both appropriate and that is what healthy canning suggests. I am going to make a couple of safe changes. I don't think that they're using enough liquid for my taste. I don't want my goulash to turn out dry, so I'm going to be modifying that. But anyway, let me share with you the ingredients we need. Our meat, of course, like I said, I'm using a pork shoulder roast, but you can also use stewing beef. Some peppercorns, bay leaves, and caraway seeds. We're going to be making a spice bag out of those. Those are going to be for seasoning only. We are not going to be canning with those in our goulash. So we're just going to put those three things in a spice bag. We need celery, carrots, and onions. Now, when I was reading through this recipe, the carrots, celery, and onions, they are only using to season the goulash. So instead of their recommendation, which is to quarter your onion but leave it attached at the root, I sliced mine because I'm going to be leaving mine in. The carrots and celery are also going to be fished out instead of being canned up. So we need six stalks of celery, four carrots, they're saying three medium onions. Like I said, I sliced my onions, the carrots and celery I just left in big chunks, but we're going to fish those out. Most of the recipes that I found for Hungarian goulash did leave vegetables in. In their research, they're say saying that that's not traditional, which is why they're only using them for flavoring. So I'm not sure. I'm not really well versed in Hungarian cuisine, so I'm taking their word for it. So I'm going to fish out the carrots and the celery. I'm going to leave my onions in because I know that I really enjoy onions being canned with my meat. So how you want to pursue that is up to you. I'm going to fish those things out. We are going to do a rub with paprika, salt, and mustard powder. I'm doubling this recipe. The recipe that they give only yields two quarts or four pints. I want to try to fill my canner. So you would need six total tablespoons of paprika. You need two tablespoons of salt and you would need four teaspoons of mustard powder. So they're calling for water in this recipe. And for doubling it, that would be three cups total. That didn't seem like very much liquid to me. So I'm going to up it to four cups. That would be doubling it and then adding a cup. Beef stock is traditional in Hungarian goulash from what I have been able to find. So I'm going to use stock instead of water and I'm using four cups. Their recipe would be three cups total. I don't think that that's enough, but we'll see. And then it never hurts to prep for more when you're canning. Then they also want you to use a third of a cup of vinegar. The vinegar here is only for flavoring, so it doesn't matter the acidity. Um, if that the acidity is irrelevant. So whatever vinegar you want to use, I'm going to be using red wine vinegar. One thing that they're doing here, and this will raise flags for many of you, they want us to saute our beef. We're going to sprinkle our spice rub on and then we are going to saute our beef and brown it. So I'm going to be using olive oil, but I want to point out that this is a tested recipe. 
most of the time you should not add fat to canning recipes but this was tested this way so we are allowed to use approximately a third of a cup of oil to saute and brown our meat. You can can this in pints or quarts they give times for both and we need one inch headspace so okay guys here we go I'm gonna sprinkle some of my spice rub on my meat and the spice rub is your salt your paprika and the mustard powder and we just want to make sure that our cubes are nicely covered you do want to, I don't think I said you want to cube your meat in one to two inch cubes chunks however you want to say it Once your meat is well coated, we are ready to brown it. I have my my favorite cast iron skillet. I've got it on medium high heat and I'm gonna add a couple of tablespoons of oil. We can add more oil if we need to. And then add your cubes to the skillet. And you want to do this in batches. Don't crowd your pan too much. You want to give it room to groove. And we just want to get everything nice and brown on each side. As you complete browning your chunks, you want to go ahead and put them in a large pot. Okay guys, I just want to remind you that we are just browning here. We are not cooking our meat through. So once you get some nice color, it's only going to take a couple minutes on each side. Once you get some nice color going, make sure you turn it. And then once you get it browned on all sides, you want to move it to your pot. Oh my goodness, you guys, I hope you're seeing this. Look at that brown color on your meat. It is fabulous and my house smells amazing. Now I just wanted to point out that as you are cooking your meat, you're going to need to add more, more oil. You don't want your pan to go dry, so just add more oil as needed. I've been adding a tablespoon or two at a time up to the third of a cup. So we're almost done here. Put all my meat in my pot and it looks just divine. So now what we're gonna do is we are gonna deglaze our pan with your liquid. I'm using four cups of beef broth. And we want to scrape up all the bits on the bottom of our pan. We want all that delicious flavor in our goulash. So now we are going to pour our deglaze, the liquid from our deglazed pan into our pot. Okay, so I added my liquid to my pot and I'm glad I went with extra liquid. It's definitely going to need it in my opinion. I don't know how, why they wrote the recipe with such little liquid. In my opinion, it could probably use even more but the four cups, we'll go with that and see how we do. If we need to add more, I'll just add some um, hot water. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and add my onions. Again, I sliced mine because I'm leaving them in. If you're not leaving them in, you are just going to quarter them and leave them attached. And then we need our veggies. My pot's gonna be very full. And then we also need to add a third of a cup of our vinegar. I'm using red wine vinegar. Okay, I went ahead and put my lid on my pot. I'm gonna let that get started. We're gonna make our spice bag. We are going to use about 20 peppercorns. I'm not gonna count them. I'm just gonna put a small palm full of peppercorns in there. We need three bay leaves. And we need two teaspoons of caraway seeds. I'm just going to eyeball it. And the caraway seeds are optional, it does say, but all the other recipes I consulted, they do use caraway seeds. So I'm gonna add about two teaspoons in my, into my spice bag. I don't have any kitchen twine, so I'm just gonna bring up the corners of my cheesecloth and make a DIY spice bag without the twine. <laughs> 
just make sure you tie it really well. This works fine. I've done it many a time without kitchen twine. See, it works just fine. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and nestle him down in there. And I'm gonna bring it up to a boil, reduce it to a simmer, and we're gonna let it simmer gently for about an hour. While that's happening, I'm gonna clean up the mess I made and get my canner and my jars ready. Okay guys, we are just about set for canning. I did consult my ball blue book just to get a little more direction on how long we should actually cook it. They state to cook it until it's, to cook your meat until it's almost tender. And I'm just about there and I haven't been cooking quite an hour yet. So you can use your own discretion on that. I did taste my sauce and it is absolutely delicious. So I'm so glad that I'm, taking the time to do this recipe for you guys. I think you'll really enjoy it. It has great flavor. Um, I wanted to mention, because I know some of you don't stick around to the end, that a great way to serve this is over noodles. You can serve it with sauerkraut. And on the Healthy Canning website, they also include a dumpling recipe that you can make homemade dumplings and then serve it with your goulash. So lots of ways to use this and I think it's going to be fantastic on your shelf. Like I said, it tastes amazing. My house smells amazing. The other thing that I wanted to point out is the fat issue. I know we're all very concerned and very conscious about fat because we've been trained for years. Don't uh, add any extra fat and I know some people especially in my canning group canning with Carol and friends on Facebook if you are not a member you need to check us out anyway I know many of you have expressed um, especially those of you who are new to canning you've expressed over there concerns when you see fat floating to the top of your meat after you've canned it or a soup even after you've canned it and are concerned about that this recipe because they are allowing four the extra third of a cup of uh, oil to brown your meat. They are taking that into consideration and the recipe was developed that way. So I just want to put your fears to rest and I wanted to show you a picture on the Healthy Canning website that you can very clearly see that they have a layer of fat at the top of their jars. So I don't want that to alarm any of you. I know it kind of goes against everything we've been taught about what's safe for canning, but just be aware of that. And you can kind of see in your meat as it's cooking a little bit of oil on top. So it's normal, it's part of this recipe, so no need to worry. So I'm gonna be canning in pints. So I'm gonna be processing for 75 minutes. If you are processing in quarts, your processing time will be 90 minutes. We must pressure can this. Um, because it is a low acid food. Uh, we need one inch head space. Modern canning guidelines state that we do not need to pre-sterilize jars or lids as long as we're processing for 10 minutes or more, and we are. So I've washed my lids set and rinsed them and set them aside. My jars are nice and clean and I'm keeping them hot in a sink full of hot water. Make sure you are starting with hot jars. I get that question a lot. Do I have to start with hot jars? And in most cases, yes. And certainly in this case, yes, we are starting with a hot jar. So I'm gonna bring you in close and we're gonna get started. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention is they don't give any guidelines as far as how much meat and how much sauce to put in your jars. So you'll have to use your own discretion. They just say to evenly distribute among, among your jars. So you'll just have to use your own discretion on that but we sure should get close to eight pints here. So let's get started. It did produce more liquid than I was expecting, but I'm still glad that I used some extra liquid um, to make the sauce. So you can use your own discretion on that, uh, but I think it benefits from a little bit more liquid than what the original recipe calls for. So two hot jars, and we're gonna ladle in our meat and our sauce to one inch headspace. Okay, once you get to your one inch headspace, you're gonna use a debubbling tool, plastic butter knife or chopstick to release your air bubbles. So just kind of poke around your jar. And make sure that your meat is completely um, covered in liquid and your sauce. Then if your headspace changes, which is common after you debubble, you can go ahead and top it off, but mine still looks good. So we're gonna take a paper towel dipped in white vinegar, 
We're going to clean the rims of the jar. Make sure we get a good seal. Place our lids. And add our rings to fingertip tight. I did fail to mention I do have my rack in my canner and I have three inches of simmering water in there as well per the instructions that come with my canner. So make sure you follow the instructions that come with your canner and place your bands fingertip tight and then in the canner they go. Okay guys, I got exactly eight pints. I have a little bit of sauce left in the bottom of my pan, but not very much. It's less than a half a cup. So I highly recommend doing the four cups of liquid, whether you do stock or water, either one. So now what we're gonna do, my canner's full. I'm going to take the leftover vinegar and pour it in my canning water just to help keep my jars clean during the canning process. We're going to add our lid. If you have the All American Canner, you're gonna line up your notch with your arrow, get your lid as even as possible, and then tighten down your thumb screws two at a time opposites. And we're gonna increase our heat to medium high, and, um, once, and then we're gonna vent for 10 minutes. Once you see a steady stream of steam coming out of your vent, you want that to happen for 10 minutes. After your 10 minutes are up, we can add our weight and then bring it up to temperature and then start our processing time. Okay guys, I vented for 10 minutes and then applied my weight to 10 pounds of pressure. Use the PSI that's appropriate for your altitude on below a thousand feet, so that's appropriate for me. And we're getting ready to jiggle here, which means that we can start our processing time. Okay, I'm gonna set my timer for 75 minutes because I'm canning in pints. If you're canning in quarts, your processing time will be 90 minutes. Now what we wanna do is slowly adjust our heat so that it's not rocking this hard the entire canning process. For the All-American canner, you want your weight to rock three, one to three, one to four times a minute. Um, if you are using a dial gauge canner, you wanna be canning at 11 PSI. Make sure that you understand how to use your canner and you are looking for what's appropriate for your canner. I know there are canners out there where the, the counterweight has to rock continuously throughout the processing time. So make sure you know how to use your canner, do what's appropriate for your canner. But in any case, we wanna decrease our heat just to maintain. Okay guys, we are all finished. Once my processing time was up, I turned my heat off, let my canner return to zero pressure naturally, waited 10 minutes and then removed my lid. So here we are and here's what our goulash looks like. It looks like it didn't have any siphoning. I'm happy about that. I think it looks great and it smells amazing. So I'm really excited to have this on my shelf. I hope that you guys will give this a try little labor intensive but i really think that it's worth it it's going to be fantastic as a meal starter served over mashed potatoes spetzel or egg noodles um, i also i think i mentioned earlier saw where some people have served it with sauerkraut so any way you want to use it i think it's fantastic to have on your shelf yeah just a really yummy and fun recipe so i hope you'll give it a try any comments or questions please feel free to leave them for me in the comment section don't forget to like subscribe and share and i will see you next time